So I know that you were learning, wanting to learn about Egypt. So I'm going to give a quick video, um, quick download about what Egypt's all about. Uh, specifically for the illiterate people. Uh, anybody can just get on Wikipedia and learn about any of the stuff that uh, many of the videos I've already put out since most of it's on Wikipedia. Um, so Egypt is uh, it's officially the Arab Republic of Egypt. Um, it's a uh, let's see in Arabic it's pronounced Gumpariyat Masr al Arabiya. Corrupts Masia Arabia. That's that's how you say Egypt in in Arabic. One more time. Gumpariyat Masr al Arabiya. I'll let him do it. He he does a little better than I do. Gumpariyat Masr al Arabiya. Right. So. Um, <laughs> It's a country, it's mainly in North Africa with the Sinai Peninsula forming a land bridge in Southwest Asia. Uh, Egypt is thus a transcontinental country and a major power in the Mediterranean Basin, the Middle East, and the Muslim world, covering an area of about 1.01 million square kilometers or 390,000 square miles. Egypt is bordered by the Mediterranean Sea to the north, the Gaza Strip, and Israel to the northeast the Red Sea to the east, Sudan to the south, and Libya to the west. Egypt is one of the most populous countries in Africa and the Middle East. Uh, the great majority of over of its over 82.2 uh, million people live near the banks of the Nile River in an area of about 40,000 uh, square kilometers or 15,000 square miles where the only arable land is found. So most of the 82.2 million people live on the banks of the Nile River. Um, 82.2 million people. Kentucky has 4 million people, so there there's a lot more people in Egypt than there is in Kentucky. Um, in fact, it's like 20, 20 something times more. So Egypt is 20 times the size of Kentucky in terms of population. The large areas of the Sahara Desert are sparsely inhabited. About half of Egypt's residents live in urban areas, with most spread across the densely populated centers of Greater Cairo, Alexandria, and other major cities in the Nile Delta. Monuments in Egypt, such as the Giza Pyramid Complex and its Great Sphinx, were created by its ancient civilization, its ancient ruins, such as those of Memphis, Thebes, and Karnak in the Valley of the Kings outside Luxor, are a significant focus of archaeological study. The tourism industry in the Red Sea Riviera employ about 12% of Egypt's workforce. The economy of Egypt is one of the most diversified in the Middle East with sectors such as tourism, agriculture, industry, and service at almost equal production levels. So the um, that's a little bit about Egypt, at least the, the tagline in the very beginning. I just finished reading this article called Decolonizing the Classroom. It's Lessons in Multicultural Education by Wayne Awe. Um, so it's this article that's calling for a multicultural education. Uh, it's kind of pointing out the Mexican War. There's a lot of uh, Mexican people who committed suicide just because they didn't want to uh, have to kill the Americans, um, and and a lot more. You know, when you add the cultural, the multicultural element to each event, there's a lot more that's going on. Christopher Columbus, you know, the guy gets lost. He finds some land, claims it for an entire different continent, and then he makes the way for slavery. He uh, starts. Uh, he captures several Indians. Uh, shows how primi how primitive and uh, trusting they are. Um, uh, that's what he went back and told the Europeans. Uh, he went back and told Europe, "Is like this is a land of plenty. There's lots of, you know, uh, abundant wildlife and trees and whatnot. But also there's a lot of primitive folks that you can um, enslave. Uh, you can you know, make them your slaves. So you know he set the the way for the slave trade. He set up the genocide of over a hundred million Native Americans in this country. So how?" How can we celebrate Christopher Columbus? How can the Native American, how could anybody really, but like if you're a Native American, you, I mean, how do you think about Columbus Day? That's not exactly a great day for you, the Native Americans. That's actually like the day genocide began, the day of the end, the day, you know, of the collapse of all of it. And um, so a multicultural approach would 
broaden our perspectives of every significant event in U.S. history. Instead of a top-down approach, it'd be a bottom-up, right? But there's just one part here about Egypt. It was talking about how uh, he went into this African studies class. They looked into to the politics of blackness through the poetry and literature, the Harlem Renaissance, uh, the Hastur segregation, desegregation, the African American identity in U.S. history, um, which is I learned actually in a whole nother set uh, uh, of uh, um, U.S. history. We had Black History Month, so during you know February, you got to learn about some of the black leaders. But in order to actually learn Black history, you know it's it's a completely separate history up until the 1960s. Uh, so the, there's uh, there's a lot of controversy actually at U of L that people didn't want to teach the Black Studies course. Um, so yeah, uh, it's kind of ridiculous that we have to learn two separate histories when we should just put them all together. We should put everybody's together. So uh, the Jewish perspective, the Arab perspective, the um, you know, uh, Caucasian perspective or German perspective and Irish and English, actually white people get to know where they came from and, uh, you know, African perspective, Native American perspective, uh, homosexual perspective, um, uh, handicap perspective. So just really from, you know, from from the, the plethora of diversity that we see with the American people, but most specifically out of the, the students. So it says we write about how Greek civilization was built upon a legacy of knowledge that had already existed in Egypt, and then we learned that Egypt really wasn't Egypt. Uh, from an African-centric standpoint, it was actually called Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, Kemet, Kemet and its own rich cultural worldview, symbolism, and creation stories. So the uh, African studies group called Egypt Kemet. So it's a, it's a, whole, it's a whole other name. And to, I think it's a better understanding of ourselves when we study other cultures too. We all the same, but we all different. And uh, I don't know, I've been learning Spanish, and when I'm learning Spanish, I'm thinking about how I have to say each word that I'm saying precisely and specifically, and my point has got to be very clear. I'm basically saying all these little baby sentences, um, you know, uh, hello, how are you doing today? I am fine. My name is Johnny. <laughs> so just saying those things, you know, you got to be real precise, and you got to say exactly what you mean. Um, and I think that's that's important to do with anybody's language. So... Yeah, by learning Spanish, I'm learning English better. Uh, learning other cultures learn helps you uh, learn your own culture. So, in my culture is diverse. I have African, Bohemian, Austrian, uh, Bavarian, and Prussian in me. So I got five different uh, ancestral lands, and then I have you know Kentuckian, Covington, and then you know different places in America, Chicago, Florida. Uh, Cleveland, um, Maysville, Gent, Warsaw, uh, Louisville, Cincinnati. So I got a lot of, uh, you know, American experiences too. So like when some folks are like, you know, I'm American. That's my nationality. I'm American. So does that mean you're not Louisvillian? You're not Kentuckian? You're not, you know, Cardinal? If you're going to U of L, you're not. You don't accept any of those other identities too. And what makes you American trumping all those other identities? What makes you more of an American over a Kentuckian? Because Lincoln won the war. Is that why you're American more than a Kentuckian? I mean, some uh. History prehistoric Egypt, there's evidence of rock carvings along the Nile terraces and desert oases. Uh, 10th millennium BC, a culture of hunter gatherers and fishers replaced a grain grinding culture. Climate changes and overgrazing around 8000 BC began to dec desiccate the pastoral lands of Egypt, forming the Sahara. Early tribal peoples migrated to the Nile River where they developed a settled agricultural economy and a more centralized society. Uh, ancient Egypt, let's see, so maybe we should learn about the, these pyramids, how are the pyramids built? The Egyptian pyramids are ancient pyramid shaped masonry structures located in Egypt. Uh, there are 138 pyramids discovered in Egypt as of 200, 2008, so there's a hundred, 138 pyramids. 
138 pyramids. I asked one person who was like putting out all this historical information how many there was, and he just said three, but maybe he didn't understand my English. But there's 138 pyramids that are in England or uh, Egypt. <laughs> Most were built as tombs for the country's pharaohs and their consorts uh, during the Old Middle Kingdom periods. The earliest known Egyptian pyramids are found at Saqqara, northwest of Memphis. The earliest among these is the Pyramid of Dozier, which was built uh, during the Third Dynasty. This pyramid and its surrounding complex were designed by the architect. Uh, Limhotep and are generally considered to be the world's oldest monumental structures constructed of dressed masonry. The estimate of the number of workers to build the pyramids range from a few thousand, 20,000, up to 100,000. Um, the most famous Egyptian pyramids are those found in, I don't know, Giza, 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 Giza. <laughs> Let's see if they got a pronunciation in Wikipedia. They have pronunciation of the, uh, no, Egypt's homeland uh Egypt's um Arabia name in uh, Arabic is Arabia Arabia something something Arabia I'll try it here Kumpariat Masril Arabia Kumriat Samaria Arabia anyways um so Egyptian pyramids uh the estimate of number of workers to build was up to a hundred thousand the most famous are found in Giza, the outskirts of Cairo. Several of the Giza pyramids are counted uh, among the largest structures ever built. The Pyramid of Khufu at Giza, the largest Egyptian pyramid, is only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world that is still in existence. So the pyramids are the only wonders, seven wonders of the ancient world that still exist today. So that's that's pretty that's pretty good. Um, didn't the Inca have a lot of like structures in the uh, in South America? Um, yeah. So the seven wonders of the world. Uh, I guess let's see. The Great Pyramid of of Giza or Giza Giza or Giza. I've got to figure out what it is. Uh, Great Pyramid. I'm gonna go with Giza. Just just because I think that might be right. Even though I don't like the way I like Giza. I like the way Giza sounds better. Um, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, Statue of Zeus at Olympia, Mausoleum at Halicarnassus, the Colossus of Rhodes, and the Lighthouse of Alexandria. Yeah, so those are the wonders of the ancient world, and they're gone. They're all gone. Demographics of Egypt. It's the most populated country in the Middle East and the third most populous on the African continent. About 80 million inhabitants in 2009. Population grew rapidly from 1970 to 2010 due to medical advances and increases in agricultural productivity enabled by the Green Revolution. Uh, green Revolution. So they had like four revolutions. Egypt's population was estimated at, in the last century. It was estimated only 3 million when Napoleon invaded the country in 1798. In 1939, Egypt had a population of 16.5 million. The population is concentrated along the Nile, notably Cairo and Alexandria and the Delta near the Suez Canal. Approximately 90% of the population adheres to Islam and most of the rest to Christianity, primarily the Coptic Orthodox de denomination. Apart from a re a religious affiliation, Egyptians can be divided uh, demographically into those who live in the major urban centers and the uh, Falahin or the farmers of rural vi villages. Egyptians are by far the largest ethnic group in Egypt at 91% of the total population. Ethnic minorities include the Abazas, Turks, Greeks, uh, Bedouin, Arab tribes living in eastern deserts and the uh, Sinai Peninsula, the Berber speaking Swiss. Um, of the Siwa Oasis and the Nubian communities clustered along the Nile. There are also tribal Biha communities concentrated in the southeasternmost corner and a number of Dom clans, mostly in the Nile Delta and Fayyum, who are progressively becoming assimilated as urbanization increases. Uh, there's about 2.7 million Egyptians who live abroad. 70% of Egyptian migrants live in Arab countries uh, such as Saudi Arabia, Libya, Jordan, Kuwait. 30% in Europe and North America. Um, 
There's a number of Iraqi refugees, Palestinian refugees, Sudanese. Uh, the Greek and Jewish communities have almost disappeared. Languages, the uh, official language of the Republic is modern standard Arabic. The spoken languages are Egyptian Arabic, Saudic Arabic, uh, Eastern Egyptian Arabic, Sudanese or Arabic, uh, and uh, some other ones, but Arabic is the main one. So, it's an introduction to Egypt. If you know anything about Egypt, now you know a little bit more.